It's Ron Gold again, and um, we are making a series of short videos. That's myself in conjunction with Three Tree Hill, and this is the second in the series. Last week, we um, retold the well-known story of Rachel de Beer and her martyrdom in her successful attempt to save her brother from freezing to death. But there are one or two anomalies about that story, really. There are many versions of it. Some versions suggest that the Medea family were on their way to the gold fields. Well, gold hadn't been discovered at that time anyway. Um, curiously, although we know the name of the calf, we don't know the name of Rachelki's little brother. Possibly that tells us what the priorities of the Fuertrika people were more cows than people. But um, more tellingly, the story of Rachel apparently took place in 1843 but it was never published until the 1920s. Now, why was that? Well, let's look at another story. And this is a story of the great blizzard in North Dakota in the United States in 1920. It was a three-day blizzard during the course of which 34 people in that state would die. And one of those who died was a 16-year-old girl by the name of Hazel Miner. Hazel was the second child in a family of five, and she and two of her siblings were to farm school about three to four kilometers away from their home. And when the teacher received news of the approaching storm, word was put out very quickly to the parents to come and fetch their children, as the children were not allowed to walk home by themselves in inclement weather. And uh, Mr. Miner arrived on horseback, um, placed the hall in the school barn, went to find the children, hitched up the small sleigh to the old horse called Old Maud, and told Hazel to wait for him while he fetched his horse from the school barn. But Old Maud, she knew the road, and she immediately set out, and Hazel wasn't strong enough to stop her. So the three children clambered onto the little sleigh, and by the time Mr. Miner returned, they disappeared. Well, he immediately followed them, but by now, the wind was howling, and the snow was swirling all around. Old Maud trudged determinedly on, on their way home, but became disoriented, as did everyone else with the blinding snow and the howling gale, and uh, missed the farm, and eventually missed the road as well. The sleigh slid off into a ditch. Hazel jumped out to try to uh, get the sleigh back on the road, and fell into the ditch herself and uh, was saturated up to her waist, her shoes filled with water, freezing water. And the three children couldn't get the sleigh back onto the road, it was just too heavy. And the sleigh was standing at an angle and uh, Hazel realized it was something of a windbreak. So in the shelter of the sleigh she put down two blankets, put her little brother Emmett and her sister Murdith onto the blankets, put another blanket on top of them took off her sheepskin jacket and put that on top of them. And then she instructed them to keep talking. And they sang songs and they recited Bible verses. And she made them promise they would not sleep. They'll talk to each other all night and they'll talk to her as well. But gradually the cold overcame her. And the little brother was to say later that she got quiet, but they kept talking. Well, there was panic, of course, back uh, in the farmhouse uh, neighbors came around to help, and the search parties went out all night. And uh, Mrs. Miner, comforted by neighbors, at some stage drifted off to sleep, and was to say later that during that short sleep, she had a vision of Hazel, who came to her and said, Mother, I have been very cold, but I'm not cold anymore. It was only two o'clock the next afternoon that the children and the little sleigh were found. Um, Hazel was dead. But the little one survived. And the old horse, old Maud, also survived and had stood patiently dead still for hours and hours on end. Had she moved and dislodged the sleigh, it is almost certain that those children would have died. There is a grave of Hazel Miners in North Dakota and a monument in the local state to her memory. And it is thought that Eugene Marais, the uh, well-known South African writer, used that story to create his own, which he called the saga of Rachel de Beer.